happy Sunday everybody. I am very glad that you could be here. We're going to have some fun today. Now we might go a little bit long and I'm not even going to apologize for it because this is so going to be worth it and you're going to love what happens next. So this morning we're making puff pastry and I want to send a special thank you to Alicia at Keto Upgrade because um, she is a pastry chef on keto and so we're all going to benefit from her brilliance today. Now there's nothing really difficult about what we're doing today. It's time consuming. So um, the one thing that I will say is the equipment that you have is important. It's nothing that's crazy or out there. A kitchen scale, hugely important for what we're doing today because having your ingredients precise is really important. Um, having a production assistant ha, for me has been huge today because I've made several batches of this and so you're going to uh, benefit from my experience I guess. Um, so having a kitchen scale that's huge. Um, a box grater because we're grating butter and we want to use the big side of the box grater. Um, refrigerating your equipment very important or at least the the um, plate that you're going to grate the butter onto so let's get busy everything is pre-weighed so we're going to be able to get through this a little bit faster and so that's a good thing just let me show you what i'm doing here okay so we have a small bowl get the bowl out of the fridge no not yet we have a small bowl, which is not the bowl out of the fridge, so I'm going to grab that one. And while I'm grabbing the bowl bottom, out of the fridge... Bottom drawer, right hand side. While I'm grabbing the bowl out of the fridge, I'm also going to grab... No, I'm going to leave that a minute. Okay, so we have a chilled bowl straight out of the fridge. First thing that we are adding is 30 grams of protein whey isolate powder. Now I will tell you, I know not everybody has this. Um, if you don't have protein whey isolate, but you have collagen powder, you can use 30 grams of collagen powder. That works just as well. We're going to get this out of the way. Okay, so next on the list is 30 grams of coconut flour. Now, if I had had time, I would have mixed this and just put the whole bowl in the fridge or the freezer to refrigerate the ingredients as well. Um, next is 30 grams of oat fiber. Now, I want you to remember this is not oat flour. This is oat fiber. So all we're getting out of this is the fiber, and so there's zero grams of net carbs in that. Okay, that's important, oat fiber. We're adding just a pinch of um, Redmond's Real Salt and one teaspoon of xanthan gum. So these are all of our dry ingredients. And one teaspoon of gelatin. We're not going to bloom it. We're not doing anything amazing with it. We're just doing one teaspoon of gelatin. And that is it for our dry ingredients. Now, mixing this together and... Now, I like touching raw dough about as much as I like touching raw meat. So, I will tell you that these vinyl gloves are absolutely my friend and I have a burn on the back of my hand so I want to make sure that I keep that covered anyway and just going through this you can put it through a sifter everything in here is very fine so um, it'll go through a sifter really well but just giving it a quick mix with your hands and making sure that there's no big lumps of coconut flour. Now the only thing that we're getting any net carbs from here is the coconut flour and one of the things that I love about this is that it's still when you do a, a toaster strudel um, it still only comes out at 2.7 grams of net carbs per toaster strudel which is what we're going to be making today. Okay so we have our dry ingredients all mixed up. Next thing we need is our grated butter. Now this is important. Now I grated this and I put it 
in the freezer so it is nice and, and frozen. And we're just going to add that to our bowl. And I seem to always spill a little bit here. And you want to touch this as little as possible. And I'm likely making some more a little later today. So I'm just going to put that plate right back in there. And take the pieces that we dropped and put them on here. Now, just give this a light toss. We don't want to give this butter time to get too warm. And then we are going to add six and a half to seven tablespoons of water. And that's it. That's the whole recipe. Now, there's one, two, three, four, five, six and about a half. Now this is ice water and having the ice in this water super super important because you don't want to be adding any kind of liquid that's going to soften your butter up. Okay so here we go and we're just going to have this come together. It isn't going to be a huge big production. It doesn't need to be, and you don't want it to do anything more than come together. Now, I'm going to use my hands for the rest of this, but this has to be done very quickly. Because if you don't do it quickly, this butter is going to start to melt. And if you're making puff pastry, the idea is you want lots of layers. And the layers come from all of these beautiful little bits of butter. Okay, now I just noticed that I forgot to do something here. So I'm just going to slip this off for a minute. I want to be able to see. There we go. Okay, now. Ugh. And here we go. Now when you watch Alicia do this on her channel, honestly, this girl is turning into my hero because I have a sweet tooth. That has always been my downfall. Okay, now this is about as together as it's going to get. And you'll see that it's kind of folly a party. And that is absolutely normal. And you need to put this in the fridge for half an hour or in the freezer for 15 minutes. Now I've handled that enough enough. So make sure we get all those little bits of butter in there. Now this is one that has been chilling, so it's ready for us to use. And I'm going to just swap the bags here and put this one in the fridge. Now in order for us to make this rough dough into puff pastry, it takes a little bit of love and attention. Good morning, Mom. Good morning, Del. So this isn't a lot of work. It's a lot of hanging around waiting. Hurry up and wait. Okay, so that is going back in the fridge. Now that will be in there for half an hour. Now the next thing, we need to get rid of this bowl. Now you want a little bit of um, oat fiber. And when I was making a, this batch that I'm holding in my hand that I need to quit holding, Del asked me why I was using oat fiber um, to dust it with and to dust the the countertop with and the reason that we're using oat fiber rather than the coconut flour is because oat fiber has no net carbs none it's just fiber so it is really important this will stick it's got a lot of butter in it so this is going to stick to your counter a lot or to your rolling pin if you don't if you don't dust it so Use as little as, as possible because we don't want this to get super sticky. We'll get that out of the way. And just set our oat fiber over there out of the way. Now, we're going to roll this. Now, this is where we get our layers. We want to keep turning it and kind of roll it into a, 
a rectangle kind of thing that is not very rectangly. And I'll show you why we want to kind of keep it rectangly if we can. And so you see the edges are breaking apart as I'm rolling this. And that's because this is the first time that we've done this. As we work this dough a few times, it's going to turn very magical. Okay, now we've got this rolled out a little bit. We can go a little bit more. And we're going to do a book fold. So you take one end, pull it into the middle, and you take the other end and pull that into the middle. If you have a bench scraper, that's awesome. Now I've got a little bit of extra oat fiber here. Now oat fiber, one of the things that I like about it is it, that it's not expensive. Okay, so that is a book fold. So fold it into the middle from the end. And when you've got it out, when it's nice and cold, we can do this two times. Now, every time we fold this, so now we have four layers, this is going to stay as layers. So we're going to have this beautiful, flaky puff pastry that just, in my brain, should not even be possible when you're on keto. And yet, here we are. And trust me when I tell you, it is possible. Okay, now you want to watch your dough and make sure that it's not sticking to your counter. Okay, now that's going to be our second roll and we're just going to leave this. Now we've got lots to do today because it isn't just about making the pastry because if all we did was the pastry what are you going to use it for so we are going to do a toaster strudel now i'm just going to give that a quick press and i'm going to put it in a ziploc bag a freezer bag now this is something that you can make and freeze so that you always have it on hand so the big reason that i went looking for a puff pastry recipe that was keto was um, a recipe that I have now for French onion soup that used to be an absolute favorite. In the fridge for half an hour, in the freezer for 15 minutes, and then you can roll it out again. And so watch what happens next. One bag in, one bag out. Now you want to do this two or three times. Now this has already been done twice and it's been in the fridge for over half an hour and I'm just going to set this bag aside because I will be using now you can maybe see I hope you can see that the the texture of this now I don't want to handle this too much but the texture of this is different it's not cracking as much as the other one was so now what we need to do with this is roll out a square we're going to do this one more time and then we're going to roll out a square. Now you can see how these layers are coming apart and we need to incorporate them back together. And keep moving it. It's less likely to stick to your countertop. Now I'm going to add just a wee bit more oat fiber to the countertop because I really, really don't want to waste any of this. You scrape it off with a bench scraper. You don't get to enjoy it in a toaster pastry. Okay, now. Oh my goodness. So this has definitely been in the fridge long enough that it is It's gotten hard, it's set up really well, and that's what you want. And we need to roll this into a square that is um, nine inches by 12 inches. So whatever that works out to in centimeters. You know, I am right at the, I was the first generation in Canada that was taught metric in school. The metric system came in when I was in grade five or grade six and 
so we learned both inches and centimeters so it's kind of like being bilingual because kids nowadays don't know anything much about inches okay now we are just going to keep rolling this out you need a ruler because you want this to be nice and thin S um turn your oven on preheat it to 450 degrees so that's important okay now this is definitely definitely being a little bit stubborn and you want this rolled out nice and thin and this is not quite ready yet well, maybe we'll see we're just going to keep working this a little bit so that it turns into it's definitely more doughy than it was and it's not cracking on the edges like it was and we want to keep this I'm going to use my counter scraper because it means I'm touching it less okay so whoops definitely keep your rolling pin dusted as well hugely important and just a wee bit on here just the tiniest little bit because that is going to make it drier okay now I am really beginning to understand why she did this as a YouTube video rather than a live because it takes a while to roll us out and we're going to just tear off a little piece from here because we need some to fill in this gap. And we need this to be a rectangle when we're done. And that's important. And again, just a wee little bit of dust on there. And just the tiniest little bit. So what is your favorite... Good morning, Tammy. What is your favorite thing to do with puff pastry? Or have you ever even used puff pastry? I said to Dell earlier, it's probably a good thing that I didn't know how easy this was to make because I would have been making it before we were doing keto and that's not a good thing. Okay, now we need to Ugh. Oh, now see? I'm the one saying, dust your board, dust your counter, and here I am sticking to the counter just a wee bit. Okay, there we go. Now this is not a perfect square, but I am going to start measuring it because you need the squares for our toaster pastry to be even, 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 even. Now, if you have a piping bag, you can use that for one of our steps. So, what do you absolutely need for this? Well, you need a bench scraper or a pancake clipper. You need a ruler so that you can tell we are almost there. And not there that way, though. So, we still got a little bit of work to do. And if you don't get it the right size, it's not going to be thin enough and you need to make sure that there's no cracks in your dough because you do not want your filling to be leaking out in this. Okay, so we're long enough, but we are not wide enough. So let's see how we are here. This is too... thick in some spots, not thick enough in others. But when the net carbs in this are so low, hi Willie, how are you? When the net carbs are so low in this, um, if it's a little bit thicker in one spot than it is in another, that's okay. Okay, now let's see. Okay, now this is not square, square, or rectangle. 
but it's pretty close and if I have to put some in the fridge which I will anyway okay so we've got our 12 inches there and we have eight and a half inches almost oh my goodness okay girls this is where size matters I'm gonna be in trouble for that from somebody I'm sure okay this way make sure that this is all even and check it again whoops check it the right way okay we are at nine inches by 12 inches we're good okay so now with this ruler again we are just going to first thing I'm gonna do is square this off because I'm not going to get even squares. And we're going to take this off. Now this is going to mean that we're not going to get, we're not going to have exactly 12 inches or 30 centimeters. So we'll work with that and I will use that in the next batch. So now, how long are we now? We are at 11 and a half inches. So I am just going to mark three inches three inches three inches now that part will be used later for something else and then we're going to go three inches this way as well oh yeah well that wasn't exactly straight oh well We will straighten it out this way. Okay, now, if you have done this correctly, and I'm not gonna guarantee you that I have, your dough will not be stuck to your board or your counter. Now, if you have a marble cutting board that you can put in the, in the freezer or the fridge to keep it Cool. Now we're done with that and we have these little three inch by three inch squares that are not all cut but they will be momentarily and we'll stretch this one out a little bit. Okay now we have these sitting here and the next thing we're going to do is something that I should have done ahead of time but I did not. So I wanted to show you this is going to be part of the filling um, just two ounces of softened cream cheese um, 30 grams of powdered sweetener and half a teaspoon of vanilla and about half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of fresh lemon juice you can add a little bit more if you want I like lots of lemon and I just went and stocked up on lemons yesterday because I am also going to be doing a keto lemon meringue pie yes it's a thing okay now we have that done grab a fork and we're gonna mix this up and then we're gonna put it in a sandwich bag you want to make sure that this is nice and smooth. It's best if you can put it in the freezer for a little while and get it nice and stiff. But I haven't done that today. So we're going to wing it. Okay. Now the first batch that I made, we're going to do a... Uh, we're going to do a uh, strawberry cream cheese toaster strudel today. Now I am just going to pour this in here. Scrape this out. The last thing we want to do is waste any of this wonderful lemony cream cheesy filling. Okay. 
and I'm going to put this in the freezer because this is runny enough right now that this is absolutely not going to work. But if I put it in the freezer for a few minutes, it will. All right, so up here it goes. We'll set it up there on that plate. And for today, we are going to do just the strawberry filling like I did last night. And then I will show you something else magical. Now, this is my homemade strawberry jam. And you need about a teaspoon or maybe a teaspoon and a half. You can do it. You do you. But remember, we want to put that over there. We want to make sure that this is going to stay in the middle. So I'm going to put a little bit of strawberry jam. Now this is where we're getting some of our um, some of our, our carbs. And then just grab a pastry brush. Egg wash is one egg and a tablespoon of water. And then beat that up. Now this is going to help this is going to help the dough stick together and so that we don't have all of the strawberry leaking out. Now, a lot of times when you're doing a pie or, I don't know, anything with pastry, you want to use a fork to press this down. But with this particular recipe, you definitely want to use your fingers. This needs to be really well pressed down. And then just grab a little knife. So I was using my bread lame last night, but I know not everybody has one of these and you don't have to have one. And we're just going to poke three or cut three little slits in it. And then either on um, a nonstick pan or parchment paper on a sheet pan. Which I also did not have out, but... There we go. We're just going to take this little toaster strudel and set it on here, and then I am totally out of counter space. Let's move this out of the way and this out of the way so that we can keep working. Okay. Now the counter space is not the issue. The camera space, this is the issue. Now that one is getting sticky, so we need to work quickly. Now after you get this on the sheet pan, if you want this to be nice and brown, definitely an egg wash on top. And then into a 450 degree oven for 15 to 20 minutes. Now that's going to depend in large part on your oven. If it's a little bit hotter, not going to take as much time. If it's a little bit cooler, it'll take the full amount of time. So just keep making these. Now I am going to put these ones back in the fridge and I'm going to do them a little bit later once my cream cheese has set up. So I'm just going to grab my bag again. These are all nice and rolled out. Just put them back in here. But let me show you what happens next. Okay, now these can go back in the bag, you, or back in the fridge. You want to make sure that they're not too, too sticky together. Now this one is ready for the oven. So let's pop this in the oven for 20 minutes. Even though it's all going by itself. And when it comes out of the oven, look at what you have. This amazing toaster strudel and my my apron is just leaving hmm. okay now this needs some icing on top so we're going to take um 
45 grams of powdered sweetener. Now I'm playing with allulose right now because I just got it for the very first time. So um, to my 45 grams of allulose, I'm adding a quarter teaspoon of vanilla and 60 milliliters of cream. Get all of that out of there. There we go. And then we are just going to mix this up with a little bitty whisk. You know, these little teeny whisks are just the best things. I use these all the time. Okay, now this is going to be a little bit runny and that's exactly the way we want it. And you do not need to go out and buy pastry bags and piping bags and all kinds of cool stuff like that because we don't need a whole bunch of extra stuff to do keto. We just make do with what we have. And I want to, next week, we are going to hopefully do sourdough bread. So we'll see how my sourdough, keto sourdough starter comes out. Okay, now we're just going to set this aside and we are going to pour this icing in here. Now, if you want to add a little bit of lemon juice to that, I suppose you can. Okay, I will scrape that out a little bit later. And just close this up. And you want just the teeniest, tiniest little hole that's nice and runny, so you want to make sure that you've got it tipped to the other side. And make sure that you don't get that little teeny piece of plastic that you cut off in your... And then we are just going to... Make this all nice and pretty and polka dotty. And there is your strudel. Now if we put this in the fridge it's going to set up a little bit better too. So that is not the most beautiful um, toaster strudel that has ever been decorated but I guarantee you that it is a yummy toaster strudel. Let's just cut into this and take a peek at what happens. Oh now I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see this. Now this one was just done with strawberry and there is just layers and layers and layers of flakiness on this. It is absolutely beautiful. If anybody had told me before I saw the video that I saw for this that you could do this on keto, I would have told them they were nuts. And am I going to do a taste test? Oh yeah, I am definitely doing a taste test. Oh my goodness. Now this does not have the cream cheese part of the filling in it, but this is absolutely amazing. This is flaky and beautiful and uh, yeah, this is, now let's see if we can get a second opinion here. We'll see if I get a thumbs up or a thumbs down because I tend to be a little bit biased. Mm. And you notice that there was nothing leaked out around the edges on this. Hmm. Okay, plate came back empty, so I'm going to say that's probably a thumbs up. Got a thumbs up from the pr production crew. So I am definitely going to be making more of these today with cream cheese filling in them. It takes a little bit of time, but it is worth the effort. So whatever you have planned for your Sunday, um, you might want to start making some keto puff pastry and definitely take some time. Phone someone that you love that you haven't talked to for a while. And I'll tell you, it is awesome to see somebody's face light up or hear their voice light up. Um, I went to visit my Uncle Jim yesterday with Bill. So Del missed a family get-together that we had for him a little while ago. 
and so we both went to visit him and it was awesome just to hear him light up when we phoned and told him we were coming and we really enjoyed our visit so reach out to someone that you haven't talked to for a while it's going to make your day every bit as bright as it's going to make theirs so thank you so much for joining me please do the very best that you can to be the best version of you this week it gets better every week and i will see you next week hopefully we are going to be making some sourdough bread next week so i will talk to you then thanks for joining me bye